we are talking about three diabetes and the di prevention of diabetes. We know diabetes is not only a pandemic, it is also a global emergency. The way the numbers are, you can see we are expecting to have around 74 million people with diabetes in India. Almost one-fifth of us. But one of the uh, depressing situation is that 50% uh, of their, our diabetic patients do not know that they have diabetes. That means they are not detected. And out of them, not even half of them have gone to the doctors. And out of those who go are not well controlled. So what does it mean? It means that maybe 10% of the diabetics are really under control for whatever means it is. I just wanted to know the, uh, tell you the gravity of the situation now. Uh, let me focus on pre-diabetes, which is very important for all of us if we need to prevent diabetes. Uh, basically, we diagnose pre-diabetes on, based on two factors. One is the fasting blood glucose, if it's more than 100 milligrams, or it, if it, the impaired glucose tolerance after giving 75 grams of oral glucose, if the blood glucose is more than 140, we call it impaired glucose tolerance. Both can, one of them is enough to diagnose pre-diabetes. So what happens is if you are diagnosing pre-diabetes based on the fasting impaired glucose, uh, we are almost seeing about 10% of the adults having uh, diabetes, whereas if it is based on uh, IGT, the number could be less. And uh, of course, the WHO projects the numbers to go up more than double in, in another next 22 years. And this is an ICMR study, we know that. So in this study, the overall prevalence of pre-diabetes in 15 states was almost 10%, 10.3%. So see this, this is uh, almost equivalent to the incidence of diabetes. So if you are looking at pre-diabetes and diabetes together, we are looking at 25% of the population, more or less. So this is what it is. Um, we will look at the other things now. So we have, the, our biggest challenge is we have high number of young people in India. You also know that these are the young people who are prone for pre-diabetes before they develop diabetes. We all know that Indians are more prone to develop diabetes at a younger age, maybe below 30. And out of 1.3 billion total population, um, we have, but on an average of 29, the Indian average age is only 29. That means we have many, many young people. So India has more than 50% of its population below the age of 25. Can you believe it? It's very important for all of us to understand. 50% of our population has youngsters below the age of 25, which is very important to handle these people. These are potential diabetics. These are already pre-diabetics, and they have a lot of other issues, and it's very difficult to manage them. And in 2020 itself, the average age of an Indian is 29, whatever I told you, compared to China and uh, Japan. Uh, imagine this is happening in spite of aging population in our country too. So it's a paradox actually, if you see. And uh, I, I was surprised, I, I recently gathered this uh, uh, material. Um, now, now just see the cities, what's happening. Have you seen some of the cities where they did this study, uh, National Council of Applied Economic Research, they have studied in six cities, metropolitan cities, or cities which are not metropolitan, and they have found out about 70% of the people inhabiting the, these cities are below the age of 35, which is amazing. This is happening because of migration of the youngsters for the jobs, all kinds of jobs, the software people and others. And Surat happens to have the highest number of 74, Lucknow has 68.8, rest of them too have, Delhi has 70, uh, which, is, which is really important. Of course, we all know that uh, diabetes starts early in India, and we, have, we are genetically predisposed, we have obesity, physical inactivity, and we are also thin fat individuals, as all of us know. Uh, despite being lean, Indians are more insulin resistant and hyperinsulinemic. Uh, he's one of the typical Indians who is going in a rickshaw. Uh, now see this. Uh, when I talked about pre-diabetes incidence, this has been studied across the states. This is also a study funded by ACMR. What is surprising is that some of the northeastern states have very high incidence of pre-diabetes. So what is happening in these states? Why is diabetes um, suddenly 
um, becoming like a you know huge uh, epidemic in these people because of change of rapid change in the lifestyle of these people who were either to very active hill climbing eating the traditional food so there is a change so northeast could be the focus of pre diabetes that means all diabetics next 10 years this is very important we know that pre diabetics will progress to diabetes this is one of the stride one studies um, done in south india madras uh, what is surprising is it was reported that diabetes and pre diabetes prevalence increased in all locations the rise was significant only in towns and peri urban villages so don't just think about uh, cities it's also the towns semi urban areas villages the situation is rapidly changing we also know that pre diabetes independently as a risk factor for cardiovascular disease and other conditions this is what you see that i mean they don't need to really become diabetic even be, even at the stage of pre diabetes they have a higher risk of these situations cardiovascular risk factors and other things and uh, this goes on so pre diabetes increases the risk of major clinical events and death independent of subsequent development of diabetes so what we are worried is pre diabetes whether they become diabetic or not leave it in the even this period of pre diabetes they have a higher risk and of course dyslipidemia if it's combined with uh, pre diabetes things become worse as you know cardiovascular problems will be more hypertension is a common condition that faced by most of the indians and young people are no exception so hypertension with pre diabetes things are worse you know that so it's very difficult vitamin d has been talked about it dr jp is here he has been talking on uh, the value of vitamin d and this is one of the studies done by uh, none other than anup mishra where they have uh, supplemented vitamin d to pre diabetic people and they did find uh, redu reduced incidence of conversion to um, type 2 diabetes uh, this is just to tell you and uh, so what is important is we need to handle them right at the stage of pre diabetes to do that first of all we need to investigate them we need to do a screening simple fasting blood glucose let's do that and if somebody's fasting blood glucose is more than 100 mg let's concentrate on them let's tell them that you need to watch your blood sugars you need to change your diet you need to change your lifestyle so that you you pro provide yourself so how do we prevent type 2 diabetes we know that it is it is the same as you do in managing diabetes both are equally important but uh, it will be much more fruitful if we can prevent uh, um, both pre diabetes as well as diabetes and management of pre diabetes all of us know non pharmacological uh, methods are the most important ones uh, talking to the patient person i won't call him a patient person and explaining my young people are not not easy to understand they won't listen to you so easily so we need to spare some time tell them convincingly uh, about the importance of losing weight if they are overweight and if they have genetically already history of diabetes so they need to be even more careful they need to exercise do something change their habits and we always talk about aerobic exercise we also talk about resistance exercise now which can really help to reduce the insulin resistance and not only in diabetics but also the people who are prone to develop diabetes uh, we also talk about the importance of having good sleep stress free life apart from the diet and uh, regular exercises and when when we are talking about reduction of the calories of the person now we just don't talk about re reduction of calories we talk about reduction of carbohydrates and also increasing the protein content which can really help in the insulin metabolism reduce the insulin resistance in these people so we need to concentrate a little bit about when telling the patient how they can take what kind of a protein they can substitute by taking whether they are lentils dal most of the plant based proteins are equally good and they are healthier also with less fat in them and reduce the carb diet which is very important right at this stage we also talk a little bit about pharmacological intervention even at the stage of pre diabetes Uh, what does this mean so there are some studies done on diabetes prevention this is one of the studies done in india by dr ramchandran and others from chennai and uh, these are also some of the studies where they have given metformin of different doses of course ada did mention that metformin can be given uh, and it helps people especially if they are overweight or they have some other comorbid conditions where you really want to give them and keep their blood uh, sugars much below low and even icmr studies have done 
uh, did show that uh, when the lifestyle alone is not sufficient, it is the time that you act and uh, use a drug like metformin, which is relatively safer and effective. And even RSSDA guideline says that try lifestyle, and if it doesn't help in the six months, if the blood glucose still happens to hover around more than 100 or touching the border of 125, better not to wait, start the person on metformin, watch him, and perhaps treat him as a diabetic, which is the best. So the first oral treatment to be approved in, even in India, uh, it's been approved, the metformin, the dosage can depend. Uh, generally, it is said that uh, lesser dose can be effective, and none of these are recommended. I just mentioned that. We don't need to give anything else. What is important is lifestyle modification, then metformin. Don't hesitate to give it whenever required. The whole idea is you want, uh, the best thing is see that they revert to non-diabetic state. Let us see that uh, pre-diabetics revert to non-diabetic state. If that doesn't happen, at least they don't become diabetic. That is important for us. So what are the future directions? This is what it is. Pre-diabetes is a precursor, we know that. Uh, so many of them get converted into type 2 diabetes, especially Asian Indians, and they, they are already in the risk of both macro and microvascular complications, even at this level. And it's also linked with some of the microvascular complications. There are also other biomarkers. Most of the time, we don't need to do that. We don't need to check the other, other aspects like uh, insulin resistance and other things. We know what's happening. So what is important is that don't focus on pre-diabetes, don't ignore it, start screening all the younger population for pre-diabetes, detect it, and then manage them by your good advice. So we have a dubious distinction of being among the top three countries amongst us diabetics, but now pre-diabetes population is much higher than diabetes in our country. So we need to work together, we need to do a lot of awareness programs, talk to our patients, and do something about it. Otherwise, uh, we are not going to win over this uh, uh, situation which can only become worse. I think I, I try to be short and thank you very much.